Spoiled Brats begins by showing a super rich tycoon in Monaco named Francis Bartek and his three spoiled children. His eldest son, Philip, a fat boy, likes to spend money collecting expensive shoes. The second child, Stella, loves shopping and partying. And then there's his youngest son, Alexander, who likes to have fun with women, including other people's wives. Francis always fulfilled whatever his three children asked for, no matter how ridiculous their requests were. But as time goes on, Philip, Stella, and Alexander's indulgence get worse, leaving Francis and his assistant, Ferruccio, frustrated. Regardless, Francis loves them very much, especially after they lost their mother 15 years ago. He even plans to throw a party to celebrate Stella's 24th birthday. And Stella was serious about celebrating her birthday. While the maids were busy preparing for the party for tonight, she was busy putting on makeup. The only problem was that she still felt she wasn't beautiful enough for the party, which made her sad and disappointed. As a result, she was constantly nagging the makeup artist and hairdresser. While Stella was having a very big problem, Philip came to Francis in his office to ask him to fund a shoe product he was making. Although the idea sounded ridiculous, Francis still appreciated Philip's efforts and asked him to send a proposal letter to one of his business partners. Although, he then reminded Philip to learn how to work because he would inherit his company one day. Night fell, and in his study, Francis talked to himself as he stared at the photo of his late wife. He always remembers his wife saying that raising three children alone is very hard for him. His maid, Marguerite, also knew about Francis's habit of talking to himself in front of his wife's photo. But at this moment, when she walked into the room and heard Francis, she felt sorry for him. She even offered to be his wife and mother to his three children. Francis wasn't really her type, but she thought it was better for her to marry a rich man than to serve a depressed person. The scene then switches to the courtyard, where Stella's birthday party is. Francis certainly didn't want to miss his daughter's birthday, and so he came out just as Stella's boyfriend, Juan Carlos, was about to open a vintage champagne bottle in an unusual way. But instead of impressing the audience, Juan humiliates himself in front of the crowd. The action ended in complete failure after the bottle broke. Francis knew that Juan Carlos was not the right man for Stella. In his eyes, Juan is just an arrogant man who pretends to be rich when in fact, he is just poor and unemployed. But as many say, love is blind, and that goes for Stella who loves the unemployed Juan. Her love for him was so great that she even went to Francis to ask for his blessing because she and Juan were getting married soon. Francis's expression immediately changed after hearing this, indicating that he did not agree with their relationship. But before he conveyed his refusal, Juan confidently said he wanted to take Stella on a honeymoon on a cruise in the Indian Ocean. And with this, Francis could no longer contain his anger, saying their marriage would only cost him his money. Then he took the gun from the display case and pretended to point it at Juan while wiping it. Poor Francis, he does not realize that he is facing the power of blind love. Of course, Stella was adamant, saying that she and Juan would still be married even without his blessing and financial support. She knew that she had no money and would use her late mother's savings for her marriage to Juan. Her decision is now fixed and nothing can stop her anymore. So, she announced her wedding plans with her beloved man to all the invited guests. Meanwhile, Francis could only sigh at his daughter's behavior. As if it couldn't get any worse. Ferruccio then called him to report that Philip had someone on his behalf deliver documents to Francis's partner, while Philip himself was having fun partying with the girls on the chartered jet. Then moments later, Alexander's lecturer, Guillaume, reported that his wife was having another affair with Alexander. In Francis's panic, Alexander suddenly came shirtless, followed by Guillaume's daughter and wife, who only wore underwear. The three of them immediately fled when they saw Guillaume, so Guillaume's report proved to be inaccurate. Alexander, the sex maniac, was not only having a fun time with Guillaume's wife, but also with his daughter. Poor Francis, he fainted with his children's behavior and even had to be taken to the hospital. And while lying in a hospital bed, his three children were arguing over unimportant matters. Fortunately, Ferruccio then told Philip, Stella, and Alexander to leave so that Francis could rest. Not only them, but Francis also asked the nurse on duty to leave. He wanted to discuss something important with Ferruccio, something he didn't want anyone else to hear. Two months later, there was a sudden commotion at the Bartek family residence. Philip, Alexander, and Stella were screaming and looking for their father. They are confused, wondering why all financial access is suddenly blocked, and they wanted Francis to explain that to them. But before they could answer, they suddenly heard a convoy of police cars approaching the house. 
Then, the policemen got out of the car and surrounded the house, about to search their home. Philip and the others were shocked at the sight and even more surprised when Francis appeared with guns and led them out through the back door. They were about to continue their escape by car. But since the police had confiscated the car in the garage, they were forced to move onto the road. Then there, Francis pointed a gun at a passing car and took it. But strangely, after they all managed to escape, Ferruccio went to the car's owner and gave him cash. On their way to nowhere, the three siblings, still confused about what really happened, finally asked Francis. And Francis explained that the state had frozen his company's account because there were fraudsters who misappropriated the company's money. Not quite there, Ferruccio has also escaped, and this case could drag Philip, Stella, and Alexander to prison on embezzlement charges. They of course denied it. They feel they have committed no crime, and above all, they don't want to be in prison. Francis then ordered his three children to throw away their cell phones so they could not be tracked by the police. On that day, Francis intends to take his three children to their grandfather's house in a small town to start a new life. Arriving at their destination, Francis's three children were surprised to see the grandfather's house, which looked unfit for habitation. And not long after, Philip complained that he was starving, but they had nothing to eat. Therefore, Francis then taught his three children how to survive in emergencies by making bread covered in cooking oil. The next day, Francis woke his three children and told them to go find work so they could survive. Meanwhile, he will stay at home because after all he becomes the main target of the police. The situation was reversed. Now it was Philip, Stella, and Alexander who had to support and please their father. The scene then switches to Alexander, who chooses to work on a building project. But instead of working hard, he annoys the other construction workers. Elsewhere, Philip tries to call his friend to borrow money. But instead of earning money, he gets insulted for involving his friend in a failed business project. Meanwhile, Stella tries to borrow someone's cell phone to call Juan. She lied to Juan, saying she was out with Francis for a few days. At the end of the day, Alexander and Philip went home without any results. Unlike Stella, who brought several packs of branded clothes. But the funny thing is, she bought the clothes by selling Philip's expensive watches. And of course she spent all that money with nothing left, much to Philip's fury. Philip decided that Stella had to be taught a lesson. And so he doused her new clothes with oil to teach her that they should be able to use the money to buy food instead of clothes. Not long after, Marguerite and Matthias, who were the household assistants of the Bartex, came, making Francis wonder who had invited them. But then it was discovered that Stella had called and invited them there. Not wanting his plan to fail in the presence of Marguerite and Matthias, Francis immediately ordered them to leave. He believes that his three children will eventually be able to work to provide for his family. They both obeyed Francis's orders, although before they left, Matthias had given Stella the address of a restaurant that had a job opening as a waitress. The next day, Philip came to an office for a job interview. But during the interview, he still showed his arrogance by asking for a high salary and various company facilities like a boss. He was finally accepted to work, not as a company leader, but as a rickshaw taxi driver. Meanwhile, Stella went to a restaurant that Matthias recommended. Matthias, who had previously been a waitress at the Bartex house, is now the restaurant's manager. Even so, he was willing to teach Stella how to be a good waitress for his customers and did so patiently. While Philip and Stella were struggling to find work, Francis chatted casually outside with Ferruccio over a sumptuous meal, a plate of lobster and champagne. But a moment later, they heard a noise in the house that made them curious. Upon investigation, it turned out to be Alexander who had just woken up. Panicked, Ferruccio hurried away so that Alexander wouldn't notice his presence while Francis went to wash the lobster dishes. But Francis wasn't agile enough. Alexander saw him carrying the lobster plate and of course he wondered how his father got the lobster. In response, Francis lied, saying he got the lobster from fishing. After returning from their new jobs, Philip and Stella handed the money they had earned to Francis, who then proceeded to separate the money, part of which would be used for dinner and the rest used to repair the dilapidated house. Dinner time arrived. Alexander who didn't contribute, could only bite his fingers because Philip and Stella wouldn't allow him to eat the food they had worked hard for. Alexander then took the initiative to look for food outside the house. He remembered that Francis could get food from nature and so he tried to find fruit in the trees around the house. 
but unfortunately, the fruits that he picked made him vomit. The next day, Philip returns to work as a rickshaw taxi driver, where he runs into an annoying driver who sees him as his rival. And what's worse, because he's still an amateur, he has to let his passenger be taken by another driver. Meanwhile, Stella looks annoyed at the restaurant because her customer is angry that the food is not as requested. She was so upset that she wanted to stop and go home. Luckily, Matthias made her realize that under these conditions, she had to be more humble and polite if he wanted to earn money. Even so, Matthias agreed that the customer had been insolent and so he had the chef spit on the customer's food. At home, Alexander, who is still not working, complains to Francis about his hungry stomach. Francis then allowed him to eat on the condition that he should help him renovate the house. And to his surprise, Alexander complied with the request. But in the evening, an argument broke out between Francis and his three children after eating together. Philip, Stella, and Alexander complained that their father was never present when they were struck by an accident because he was too busy at work. Starting from Stella who suffered from anorexia for one year, Alexander who went to prison for smoking marijuana, to Philip, who had peritonitis. They all expected Francis to come, but he never accompanied them. That's why they always wished that they wouldn't be lonely if their mother were still alive. The scene then changes to the daily life of the three siblings who are now starting to change. Philip is now getting to know his rival who often steals passengers, and it turns out they have the same dream to become a successful shoe entrepreneur. Meanwhile, Stella is getting used to her job as a waitress, and Alexander is getting more diligent about helping Francis fix the house. Elsewhere, Juan Carlos is having an affair with Stella's friend, who later says the Bartex are in trouble. Juan was even more suspicious because he knew Ferruccio was working in Francis's office as usual. Therefore, he plans to investigate what happened to the Bartek family. Until finally, after conducting an investigation, Juan finds out what really happened to the Bartek family. And it wasn't long before he came to the family's new residence, just as Francis was repairing the house. Seeing Juan, Francis was afraid he would expose what he had done to his children. If that happened, Philip, Stella, and Alexander would absolutely hate him. Fully aware that the situation is on his side, Juan expresses his willingness to Francis to keep his mouth shut as long as he allows him to marry Stella. So, with great compulsion, Francis finally agreed to Juan's request. Not long after, Philip, Stella, and Alexander arrived at the house, and Juan immediately greeted them by giving them the good news that he would redeem all the funds the state had frozen. He claimed he even sold his property in Argentina so they could live as luxuriously as they used to. With that, the Bartex then returned to their former home. The three children of Francis were very happy, while Francis looked gloomy because he failed to teach his three children valuable lessons. All of his plans failed because of the troublesome Juan Carlos. The next day, Francis, accompanied by Ferruccio, invited his three children to his office to tell them the truth. But when Philip and Alexander were waiting in the lobby, Juan took Stella to the mayor's office for their wedding instead. Upon learning that, Francis immediately contacted Juan, asking him to allow him to speak to Stella. But unfortunately, Juan was not willing to hand over his cell phone to Stella, which made Francis very angry. Disapproving of his daughter marrying Juan, Francis takes Philip and Alexander to the mayor's office. Meanwhile, Stella was shocked when she discovered that Juan Carlos's real name was Kevin Laporte. Fortunately, when she was about to say the wedding vows, Francis had already arrived with his two sons. And at that moment, Francis revealed that the embezzlement of funds was just a lie that was deliberately made so that Philip, Stella, and Alexander learned to live a hard life and become more independent. Hearing this, Francis's three children decided to leave. They were really disappointed that their own father would lie to them. They were so fed up that they swore never to see their father again. And nine months later, they never returned to Francis, though they sent checks to help him pay the rent. Seeing him living alone and gloomy, Marguerite still insisted on offering to be his wife and mother to his children, but he always responded curtly. One day, while on his way home from work, Ferruccio explained to Francis that the company's profits were now rising rapidly. But Francis didn't respond. His mind seemed to be on something else, and that's when Ferruccio realized that his boss had missed his three spoiled children. So, Ferruccio drove off the highway and drove to the house where Francis and his three children used to live. Francis's own children now live together and have built their own careers. 
Alexander now had a car to take him to work on a building project. Philip was able to sell his shoes in bulk with his co-workers, while Stella and Matthias opened a restaurant together. Then at the end of the film, Francis is seen arriving at the residence of his three children carrying a bouquet of flowers. He walked into the house, wished Stella a birthday, said a few words to the children, and then left. But then, as he walked to the car, Francis heard Stella call out to him, followed by Philip and Alexander. The three of them have forgiven their father for teaching them useful life lessons. And spoiled brats ended with Francis smiling happily 